So, uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, sorry for this aggressive scent here burning in the room. <laughs> Just it's, a, uh, it's my point of personal privilege to burn incense. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh, okay. So I, I got to get these tears of joy up on the screen. The thing is, it's on my personal email. I Question. I can no. send it to you on Slack. Would that help? Mm, I'm going to read this uh, quote while you're figuring that out from philosopher Martha, and I hope I pronounced the last name right, Nussbaum or Nussbaum. Uh, emotions there we go. are not just a fuel that powers the psychological mechanism of a reasoning creature. They are parts, highly complex, messy parts of this creature's reasoning itself. Yeah. So let's, I want to break this down. I want, I want to get in this quote before we get into the um, tears side of things. We're going to talk about tears and looking through them in an optical microscope. Emotions are not just the fuel that powers the psychological mechanism of a reasoning creature. Let's stop right there. So you have emotion thinking and then feeling. Feeling is uh, reflecting back on a past emotion associated to the thought of an event. Okay? So there's a feeling is a combinatory thing. But emotions themselves, that's that sort of thing like no matter what happens, like if there's something that's threatening your life, no matter how cool you try and keep it, adrenaline is going to go through you. Mm-hmm. Cortisol, there'll be stress. Things are going to be occurring. So when you talk about emotions... They're not the only fuel that affect our psychology and our choice here. And we do, uh, we do reason. It's not, it's not the key driver is what she's trying to say. So for how we make our choices, emotion doesn't drive it all. No. We have the ability to think for ourselves. If, if we choose if, to operate in that. In that paradigm. Right. So she so she then says, you know, they're parts and they're complex. Emotions. They're messy. Yeah, emotions can flood and they, they bleed into one another and then they just, they, they essentially envelop the entire body. But you have to realize when you look, the past is not real in and of itself. So that uh, that eliminates that emotion, the importance of the emotion. Correct. The emotion is just an emotion. It's a thought that is just going and transparent. So I want people to understand this. If, if we have a baby doll and I use, and I had this baby doll since I was, and I had it in my life since I was eight years old. And then I said, I don't want it anymore. Mm-hmm. It's an old baby doll. Hair's missing and I may be coming out of it. It's ripped on the foot. You're going to look at this like, this thing needs to go to goodwill. This is old. You, you're going to have no emotion attached to that. Sure. I, on the other hand, is going to have so many fond memories and emotions of this yep. security that I developed with, that with doll. this doll and the emotion. You looking at it. No emotion. Me looking at it. I'm attaching emotion to an object from the past. So that object doesn't exist and my past doesn't exist. No. So, but what is it doing? It's changing your reasoning about the disposal of that doll. Mm -hmm. So that's why she is saying that these messy parts affect a creature's reasoning itself Mm -hmm. because they bleed in. And so it's like, oh my God, this is going to change how I make decisions. Yes. Because of how I feel about this. So this is really important. So, you know, she wrote in a treatise, on the intelligence of emotions. And what's interesting about this, and go ahead, you can hit the line. Yeah, it's it's the process powerful poetic image depicting the emotions as geologic upheavals of thought. I, yeah. I like that they use the word geologic. So the point of that is because she does topographical analysis, the same thing we do with maps, test elevations and stuff like that. They do under a under a microscope, they are doing these analysis to look at these upheavals. So as you think, and that forms a feeling Mm -hmm. blended with the emotions, creates a topographical pattern within someone's tears. The crystalline structure of your tear changes dependent on the emotions, thoughts, and feelings embedded within that during that point when the tear is developed. So this upheaval, so as the thought is occurring, Coming to the forefront, it geologically, topographically creates a map, a crystalline map. Yeah, and then she says the geological complexity of that secret place is what photographer Rosalind Fisher explores in the uh, to- topogra- I never topography. Can, topography of tears. Um, a striking series of duotone photography, photograph- 
God, I can't talk today. Photographs of tears shed for a kaleidoscope of reasons, mm -hmm. dried on a glass slides, and captured in a hundredfold magnification through a high-resolution optical microscope. So we're going to use a high-res optical microscope to take black and white imagery, two-tone imagery, of how things are drying. So as right. it dries, the moisture leaves, the crystals, salt crystals, anything that's in there is going to form specifically. So I think this is really important because they talk about joy, grief, gladness, remorse, hope. And then look at those. So I want people to understand your emotion affects you physically. You bet it does. And, and, and we're going to see that. If, if my here, body's salt and water, okay. You're an aquarium. If I'm, an, if I'm a walking aquarium, <laughs> right? right, And I'm thinking nasty, negative, ill thoughts. What do you think it's going to do to my crystalline structure? Yes. It's going to jack it up. It's going to be all discoherent and nasty looking. But if my thoughts change... Tears of love, tears of joy. There's going to be an equilibrium, a beautiful geometry. Yeah, love and light. My Imagine. body crystallizes to mm -hmm. actually allow beauty to come through it. So when they did the topography, what, did, what were the topics here? Joy, grief, gladness, remorse, hope. Right. Look at grief. We got grief up here on the, on the screen for anybody who's watching. Watching on the video, you can see this, yeah. What are your first thoughts when you see grief? When, when I saw it, it looked kind of like there's kind of a pattern in there, but it's it, it's at the same time. There's some parts of it random. Some part, it's it's to me, it's like trying. When I saw this, I immediately thought of I'm trying to make sense out of this. Yeah, like I'm 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 losing hope, and I'm trying to make sense out it, of something. Its pattern lacks like logic. Yes. There's no it it lacks a flow. It's right. it's almost like the grief is is um dotted on this slide to say that, you know, as I remember a thought in some weird area, bang. You know, there's a lot of emotion around it. See how it packs in one area? Right. But then it dislodges itself. And, so then and, I'm flowing around, I'm okay, and then oh my god, the grief hits me again. Mm -hmm. Grief, and we've all experienced grief, but grief is I just want to explain this really quick and you can talk about this, but grief is is it's ego based. Because it's you, it's saying I, and it's separating you from an outcome. And a lot of times it's a person, maybe a person passing away or, or, or something, you know, horrific happened. You lost a job or, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's you putting yourself at, at on the pedestal and yeah. then separating yourself from that other. You know, I get a divorce. Well, look at so this. I feel very grieved. If you see the slide, like you're talking about, yes. that grief, mm -hmm. separating yourself, look how much space there is. Yes. Yeah, exactly. There's so much space from yes. all these yes. different things. You're actually pushing things away. And right. it's seen in the tears. So what grief does physically for people is also showing up here on this slide. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. And then showed in contrast to change. Tears, yeah, tears of, change. of change. Yeah, this is interesting. There is... There are crystals everywhere on this slide. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like an obscure uniformity to the whole slide itself. Right. But within the chaos, something is creating structure. It almost looks like a choice was made. Yes, that's, that's what amongst, I was... That's what I, I had when I originally thought it know, was a you choice. You know what I'm saying? You could see the choice. You, this is, that to me is a physical choice, uh, like a very right. visual physical choice. Right. I'm loving this. This is yeah. great. Possibility and hope. And to me, this this to me, it was almost like uh, a oh, tributaries yeah. in a river. Well, what are that they things are flowing. Yes. See how it flows and it out, gets, and, and there's and possibilities. Reach. They'll you reach, reach very far. Yes. And you see how they're all getting their own new right, branch. Right, right. You're opening up all these new areas for life to happen. Right. I love that. Tears of possibility. What would that feel like for you? What would I have to think about for a tear of possibility? I think just being excited, maybe, maybe there's a job that you've always wanted, or maybe you finally graduate, you get your master's degree or something. Oh, maybe, or like crying. the stress drops off immediately. Yes. Yeah, so you finally like, get a I response finally, email, you know what I mean, or yeah, anything that, like so that. I, so I have, I, I'm unemployed, and then I finally get the job of my dream, so there's tons of hope, you know, that type of thing. This one was really beautiful, I Talk thought. Talk to me, which this one? Was, this was one I really enjoyed, Tears of Compassion. And, wow. and th this, this, this closely, to me, this one was the one that closely aligns with Speaking of aquarium, this one was the most aquatic, I thought, and with marine biology and life, this, because this looks like seaweed. Yeah. And do you see how it's curved? Yes. They bend, and it's almost like they're wrapping into one another. Mm -hmm. So when I think about compassion, 
I have to wrap myself into yes. the other person's emotions. Yes. I want to feel for them, have that empathy. Yeah, it's service to others, yeah. This is very service to others. It's curving. It grabs. Yes. When you think of things in nature that are curved, they're designed that way to grab more. They're more articulate with what they're doing. Does a, 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 a crab itself have straight pincers? No, yes. they're bowed. They're just, they're trying to grab things. Well, and I also think, you know, in, in, as far as marine life, it operates in the mechanism of the ocean. So, you know, and then a evolution. Sea of compassion. Yeah, yeah. Ev- and then we make references to sea of compassion. But it, it's, it's the evolutionary process of that adaptation. Yeah. You know, so when we show compassion, we're at our highest self because we're understanding adaption. Mm-hmm. And we're flowing with that person, even though we're, we're experiencing oneness with them, which is what I see in there. We're experiencing oneness with them in the sense of saying there's totally acceptance. Wh- whether you're not evolved or you're evolved, I'm showing compassion. I have the opportunity, or we call it love or, you know. Um, but you're, you're branching out to these people. right? It's almost like, the see this right here? It looks like a big wide net mm-hmm. of seaweed. Mm-hmm. How yeah, much stuff like can me. I collect and bring mm-hmm. it to be a part of? But it just shows us, you know, how we're so ingrained. This one was the most beautiful one. This to me. blew the, my the, mind. This looks like a, a Persian rug. Do you know what? Do you know what? A snowflake. Redemption is a. It's an internal thing for you. It's where you have to forgive, like yourself. You ha- and when I say forgive, you just have to recognize the fact that you're human and you make mistakes. Right. Don't carry this false perspective that you are to blame for like all these other things that are going on. Just understand that you made a mistake, you learn from it, and you move on. And so when people feel redeemed, when they've truly overcome something, when they find that that level of understanding, look at the symmetry. They've created a balance within themselves, mm-hmm. an equilibrium. Look at that point of impact. Yeah. Dead in the center. Like the center of you, you, you are now becoming one with yourself. There's well, a balance. Well, I mean, redemption to me, and not to oversimplify it, um, but if you take lo- if you put logic in there, it's just learning. It's just learning. Yeah. But what did they learn to do? They learn to balance their yes, thoughts. Yes. And there's an epicenter when it comes to a tier of redemption. A pair to, but I, I want to stop you here. A pair to, because we're going to get into remorse, which is opposite of that. But uh, it, she talks about the nature of tears. She says it's a composition of water, proteins, minerals, hormones, and enzymes. The hormone got me because I was like, well, if you shed a tear and it hits somebody else's They're going to absorb that. They're, yeah, they're going to, I mean, hormones like pheromones and all that stuff, it, it, it plays a huge role. That's why we find people attractive when we get near them and we don't find people attractive. Wow. You know, like we're automatically. licking their tears. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Still, yeah, I, know, yeah. I know that sounds well, people have done spit that. Yeah, everywhere, yeah. but. But I mean, it's like, uh, uh, well, kissing does that. You know, I mean, there's like hormonal transfers. There's on an kissing. exchange. There's that's a lot occurring. of stuff that goes on. Yeah. But look at, so we, we just saw redemption. Now we're going to see remorse. Let's go to remorse. I, I don't even, you know, here, okay. Here's my first thought. Do you see how there's an area of roundedness, mm-hmm. like an amoeba, but it's just getting absolutely nailed with this straight, like very potent geometric Yeah, thought. it remind me of like when a virus hits or a cancer or something it's hits It's like a protein a cell. spike going yes, into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is remorse? It is this like targeted thought mm-hmm. of this one event that you feel horrible for. Yes, yes. So it's like I have all the event that's occurring up here and what I'm doing is I'm just injecting myself mm-hmm. into it. I'm mm-hmm. pulling myself out of time and dropping myself back into that moment. The next one is wild. This is kind of a fun one, but look in the beginning, look at the pattern of the leaves. This is tears of onions. Yeah. I would like to see what like leaves on an onion, what what it looks like the plant does. I'd like to see if it's close to that. See if it's, if the actual chemical from the onion shares the same crystalline pattern that is also found within the tear itself. Yeah. Like the energetic signature becomes shared. Like we're imprinting. Yeah. It's linked. Yeah. Imprinted in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And then this one was wild. It made a heart, but I mean, it's like tears for what couldn't be fixed. You know, see how thin it is and fragmented. It's fragile. Yeah, yeah, it's very fragile. Yeah, it's 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 just broken. It's almost like someone dropped a uh, glass pane on the ground, and this is what's left of it. You can't put it back together. There's too many pieces. It's not gonna. It's not gonna come back. Together. It's not gonna. Yes. There's no wholeness to it anymore. Yeah, uh, she says this too. Tears are intellectual. 
because they come from thoughts that spill over the bodies containing well. They are a secretion of excess we assign to emotion. Perhaps emotion itself is simply caused by a surfeit of thought, which it is. I mean, it's just thought, and then it's overwhelming us, and that's just a it's a mechanism that our body, like it throwing is. up. Yeah. You know, I mean, to purge the, you know, if we eat something bad, we get food poisoning, we're going to be throwing yeah, up. If I have a thought and I'm trying to purge it, or find yes. some sort of counterbalance to the non-physicality of it with the physical, right. I'm going to use the tear. It's a mechanism of release. Or, or we watch a movie. Mm. You know, you can watch a movie and get, you know, like you tr- guys try not to get teary-eyed or whatever. But you I watch, get teary-eyed. I yeah, cry yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, but you watch something and it's like amazing. Point of personal privilege, I cry <laughs> a lot. <laughs> this one was the scariest one to me. I don't know why, but it was like, it was almost like this a... This looks like a horror film. Yes, th- exactly. Does it give you that feeling? Yes, it gave me exactly. That's what I was fixing to say. Yeah, I am like waiting for something to attack me. Yeah, it's a... It, oh my gosh. And what, what, what it is, it's overwhelmed. Overwhelmed tears, yeah. See the, you know, see the encroaching from the bottom? Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm up at the top. I'm trying to juggle all yes. of these different crystalline patterns, you know, yeah, thoughts, yeah. whatever it is. But all these other tiny little things, which my mind is thinking about, are coming to just envelop me. Yes. That's what that reminds me of. Yes. That's my first, when I empathically am looking at this, like Eckhart Tolle would, I'm about to be overcome with all the chaos in my mind, the outside world. <laughs> I'm in a constant state of meditation. This is how I prevent Constantly, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then last one is, uh, it's fittingly so, is tears after goodbye. Do you know what this this reminds me of? A compass. And I'll tell you why. What happens when you say goodbye? People go in their different directions. Yes. That's what this is showing me. Mm-hmm. These are roads. I'm going to take this path. Gone. Someone's going north. You're going south. You know, that's how I read this. Yeah, and what's, your, J- what's your vibe, though? Tell me. I want to know how you feel about this. To me, this one was uh, when, I, when I began to look at primitive uh, Celtic uh, symbols and stuff. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, that, that was kind of like... Druid symbols and stuff like that. That's kind of like what, what I saw from this. You would see in the woods and stuff like that. They would make these. Um, I saw that. But w- when you say goodbye, you know, and we look at this, because I think this is really, really important. Goodbye is once again, when you look at all these, and, and emotion is something, that, that's why we have this. Um, I, I was mm. hearing somebody the other day, and they were talking about wisdom and love. You know, and like love is the feminine side, and wisdom is the masculine side, or sure. knowledge, was yeah, all those yeah, things. Yeah. When, when we look at emotion, to me, that's kind of our feminine side. You know, logic may be the masculine side because we're both male and female. Yeah, the, it's, it, the feminine side is like the enveloping. Yeah, and so in. like the you emotions. You have to feel, yes. bring it in. And I, 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 think, I think crying is great. It's a good thing. It, it's, it's like a release valve maybe, like a pressure valve, and it releases. But for me, it's like when you begin to identify with emotion – that's where it gets scary. And because and, and, I want to kind of go practical with this. This is amazing and people can see these online. But I encourage people, you can buy the book on Amazon and you have the book. Yeah. But when you begin to identify with that emotion, physically you can see what it does to you. So identifying, mm. y- you are not your emotion. No. You're- you, you are not your, you are not any, any of, to say goodbye to somebody, you, yeah, you may feel sad or whatever, but it's, it's really ego coming in saying we're separate. Because no matter if they live in see how it ends uh, Nigeria or they live in Canada or they live in the United States, you're all one. And with technology, we have you know, I mean, so and sometimes goodbyes are really good for our evolution. No, it's good. Sometimes you need to say thank you for this learning. Mm-hmm. It's time for me to go take another path. Yes, we will say our goodbyes, and I'll go on my path of learning over here. So when it comes to um, and, and I want to get into this uh, because I think it's really, really important. Um, I, and, and I haven't, I haven't looked. I would be curious to see what Raw talked about on the Law of One, but um, when it talked about emotions, I've never looked that up. Maybe, maybe you could hop on LL Research, but uh, and I don't want to be ladle it too long in in this. But I feel whenever we have emotion and we don't take the time to be self-aware of that emotion and to stop and pause. Because a lot of people, okay, you no, saw ahead. something Continue, good. Finish your but thought. But a, a lot of people react on the emotion that they're feeling in that moment. They make that crazy text. They make that crazy phone call. They, you know, like suicide is that way. To me, I'm watching Yellowstone. 
uh, the TV series mm-hmm. with Kevin Costner and w- one of his sons, spoiler alert, one of his sons is trying to commit suicide. Yep. He's up on the mountain with a rifle. Yeah. And Kevin Costner gets off his horse and walks up there. And he's like, son, this is the most selfish thing you could ever do. He goes, this is your legacy. This is what you can be known as. Yeah. Everything you've ever done in your life. Well, think about how much separation you are also creating from others. Yeah. People that love you. It's all selfish and ego. No. And you're also, and you're limiting your ability to learn mm-hmm. by saying, I'm going to end it right here. Yes. You know, it's like essentially ripping yourself out of the best school possible. But that's a that's a decision based off of emotions. That's yeah. the finality of it. But it's all you believing in these emotion. Believe, believe, believe. I am this emotion. I am depression. I am. No, you're not. You know, you're not I am those this. Things. And then next thing you know, then you become a victim to those because that's your identity. Correct. And then next thing you know, you have a rifle up to your head. So, yeah. you know, and, and I just feel like it's very important that we began to fully understand and become self-aware. And what did Ross say about emotion? So this is what they said. I'm Ra, the thoughts of an entity, its feelings or emotions, and least of all, its behavior are the signposts for the teach learning of self by self. Just like you're saying, don't have these things identify who you are. Mm-mm. Only use them to teach yourself. Mm, They're a signpost so yes. on your path, your journey. Having these feelings are not your finality. They just tell you where you should take a left hand turn. So I'm having I'm having feelings of grief. We'll use that one earlier. Okay. So if you're having feelings of grief, this is what Ra would say. In the analysis of one's experience of a diurnal cycle of an entity may assess what it considers to be inappropriate thoughts, behaviors, feelings, and emotions. So, through your day and night patterns, wake and sleep, the feeling and reflection of this emotion you're having, okay, you will have the recognition that this thought is actually inappropriate. But what they're saying is that it takes time. Mm. It takes reflection of multiple days of the cycle of who we are. And it says, in examining... These inappropriate, because it's not appropriate. It's not, it doesn't define who you are. No. In examining these inappropriate activities of mind, body, and spirit, complexes, the entity may then place these distortions in the proper vibrational ray, ray and thus see where the work is needed. So through the reflection of these feelings, not to let them define who you are, but for it, it's allowed you to go through the cycle and work on them and tell yes. you what should be the focus. It's your signpost. You have these feelings not to define the outcomes for mm. you, but to allow you to decide for yourself where you need to go. The feeling the feeling is just a point of what did you a point of preference? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what no, it is. No, but I mean it's the feeling is there. It's say, okay, self awareness kicks in. Yeah, check, bang. Okay, learning lesson. Yep. Signpost. What do I learn? What do I learn? And then whether you, like for me, I would get a piece of paper and pencil out and I'd start writing, what am I learning from this emotion? Why do I feel this way? Yep. I'm not identifying with it. It's not me. No, it's not. But it's given me an opportunity to see where I can learn. And I guarantee you, because I've done this a lot, I guarantee you it will change you 100%. Oh, absolutely. You know how many times I thought about like, why am I so heated right now? I'm like, yeah. oh. And I think about it, I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. It's not necessary. Yeah. It's all good. It's, a, it's just emotion. Yeah. It's just emotion. Yeah. And it's going to come. And it's a human thing. Right. But it's only there to create these catalysts for your mind to right. help you evolve, to help you develop. And it can be both ways. Let's say you have massive emotions of joy. Okay, it's a learning lesson. That's all it is. Signpost. Why why am I experiencing so much joy? Woo, joy. Yeah, I'm experiencing so much joy because, you know, my son told me he loves me and and this happened and this happened. Great. Well, okay. I can learn from this. How can I create more loving moments for my son? Right. How do I place that work within myself? Yes. yes. To then again, reflect I, it out. I did this and he was so appreciative and I didn't realize I did this. What did I do for him to give this response back to me? And how can I do more of those? So, so it doesn't just have to be negative. No, it's, it's not negative. It's None just it learning. Negative. It's teach, learn, learn, teach. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, you unify with yourself mm-hmm. and you unify with other selves. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. So in closing... I want people to uh, uh, cry more. Yeah, cry more. Yeah, <laughs> let it out. That's fine. Uh, be no, self-aware with it. But no, if you are feeling suicidal, mm-hmm. if you are feeling alone, if you're feeling Depressed, joy, any, of those, any things, yeah. of those things, right? If you're feeling gratitude, what is there to learn in that moment? That you need to 
buy a car at quality Mazda and com, <laughs> our sponsor. <laughs> and also you need to sign up at Tartle. Uh, start getting paid for your data at Tartle.co. Mm-hmm. 23 and me and all these companies just took $600 billion of your data and you paid them. You paid them to take it from you. Uh, you need to claim your data and you need to take it back. Best way to do that. Plus you can give to causes like climate stability, human rights, or put resources towards group that help people that have suicidal yes. thoughts. So we encourage you, if you're looking for a vehicle, go to look at our sponsor, quality and M.com. If you want to take back your data, take control of it mm. and start getting paid for your work, which Yummy. is the things that you do online. Cause we work for pay. Yes. Where can they go? Oh, they can go to tartle.co T A R T L E dot C O. 